Hi, um, Jason Chow. Um, I would like to talk about um, pre-processing Android application packages for static analysis at scale. Um, I work for the University of Siegen in um, in Germany, but yeah, but I'm most uh, but mostly I'm based in the in the United Kingdom, and. And my department is a humanities department, and most of my colleagues will do humanities subjects. So, um, so uh, what is a humanities subject interest in in mobile applications? Uh, when you look at um, um, uh, well, data from the web of science, you can see that well, well mobile applications have attracted were well, huge um, research interests for multiple disciplines. So it's no longer um, well, it's, it's, it's no longer a thing for a computer science, uh, security, or, or technical disciplines. Now, now, you have a wider and wider a range of disciplines uh, which, are in, which may be interested in uh, mobile applications. And so, and, 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 and so do the humanities um, subjects um, um, that, um, that my department is focused on. Um, so, so, so before we talk about um, Android applications, just give you a, well, a little bit of uh, introduction to the structure of an Android application. So, an Android application is an APK file, but effectively it is in the same format as a zip file. So, you may simply rename .apk, uh, .apk to .zip and unzip it and see contents. Um, so, and so it's basically that. And um, so this zip file contains uh, the elements that you may usually find in, uh, well, in well in a software application, like the code. So for the case of Android, it is not machine code. It is called bytecode. It is kind of an intermediary code, um, like the bytecode for Java. Uh, but it is a, a, a variant for that. And you will also see an XML file that describes um, the, well, the ID of the app and the version of the app and, 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 and the permissions that an app needs from the device for an app to function. And you may also find the static resources that um, an app needs to function. So when I uh, so when I did my first um, postgraduate degree, I built a small thing called um, app um, app history. So it's basically a small tool to compare the similarities between um, Android applications. And so um, so sometimes you make um, interesting discovery. So I so I found um, well two apps that are very similar. So they are very similar in its code and and is very similar in the libraries that it, that. Um, um, that they used, and actually they were published by the same um, app developer, but they were on two radically different subjects. Well, interestingly related. So you have so so this very same app publisher published an app on erectile this, uh, um, uh, uh, erectile problems, but at the same time it published another app on quit porn, but. These two apps share basically share the same code base, so there's very little. Um, 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 so, so there are very little differences between these two apps. So sometimes you make very interesting discoveries from a a a, a from the perspective of a humanities subject. Okay, okay, let's go back to. Well, to uh, to Android application. So after you unzip or decode an app, these are the elements that you can find. So um, Android manifest is the most important piece of information in an app in an in an Android application. Um, it's an XML file, and you can find, as I said, um, well the web ID and the version number, etc., in that XML file. And there's a list of permissions that. Um, 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 that an app needs to get from the device. A quick show of hands, who use an Android device in this room? Oh, brilliant. So, yeah, so, uh, so I guess you you may have heard of permissions. So when you download an app from um, Google Play, you may have come across the term permission. So you basically know um, what um, an app might get, uh, 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 well, sorry, what data um, an app might try to get from your device. And so, from the so from the, from the permission, it's possible to measure the level of intrusion into user privacy. So, um, so this is the so so this is the, the bit of information that we can get from permission, and from the code. So, bytecode is the decompiled form of a um, machine code. Um, so, sorry, I put this. Right. So, uh, so from bytecode, we can disassemble it to well, well, to, uh, to well, to more or less understand how an app works. So, from the 
this uh, from the, this assembled by code, um, we can scan it for some specific um, system calls. So there could be some suspicious system calls that we think an app should not be calling. And it is possible to do that scanning after we decompile the code. And we can also scan for some suspicious packages or class libraries. And we can also scan for some suspicious um, um, inform hard coded information in the strings. And 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 so from so from this piece of information we can detect who are the actors. So in media studies, actors, well you can imagine it as simply the companies. So which companies, which suspicious company, what in Interesting companies might be interested in um, user privacy and, and 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 what they're going to get and 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 what exactly what what are their interests in this app. And so we can study these um, actors um, from the compiled code, and we can detect uh, some of the functionalities which are hard, uh, which is hard to detect uh, or, or undetectable by just scanning the permissions. And um, so, uh, and, and most of us use. Um, um, Android applications downloaded from Google Play, but it does not. Uh, but it's not the same for um, well for many markets in the world. In the Chinese market, people do not get the apps from the Google Play Store because China has its own app market, and there are numerous and there are, and, and, and there are multiple app markets. So a publisher can publish a same app to multiple app markets. So and there could be some variants of these apps. And so it is necessary to compare um, well how these uh, applications were signed using the 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 deliver. Uh, using the, devel the, the developer um, certificate. So there's a lot of things for us to look at um, um, these elements from an, Azure, from an Android application. As I said, it is easy to, let's say, unzip um, a zip file, but but um, in, but in practice, you can't just unzip it because the APK format is a is an encoded form. If you just unzip it, um, many files would appear um, not intelligible. So you need to use a tool to decode an APK. So a well-known tool is called an APK two. So it's really simple. You just yeah get this two through uh, through add gap um, uh, execute this command to. Well, to extract for things from an APK, and the problem is that it extracts thousands of small files, so uh, into a deep hierarchical uh, hierarchy, uh, deep hierarchy of um, directory structure. And let let me give you this as a as, a, as an example. So for this um, app, um, so this so. In the APK form, so it's just um, about seven megabytes. But after you decode it, it would become um, eight thousand files, and um, and 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 the and, and the size of these files in total is forty-four megabytes. So um, after the process of um, decoding and um, and and disassembling, well, the, well, the file explodes in size and in the number of files. So there's a problem. Um, the I/O performance of traditional file system is low when you have to deal with a high number of small files, and it will take um, about three to five minutes to scan the disassembled code of an APK. So it would take a lot of time when you need to just analyze one APK. And so when I so, so so when I was tasked to tackle this problem, and there are some additional um, requirements. Uh, the first is scalability. So um, so it's not just so my so my supervisor wants that. It, 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 uh, okay, it's not just a tool that some uh, well, well some technical researchers can use. It should be a tool that that could be open to a wider audience. So it needs to be scalable. So. Um, and, and when you need to make it more scalable, um, it, it, it only means the availability to more users, but you also need the capability to um, analyze hundreds or thousands of APKs at a time. Imagine that when you when, when you need to uh, well, do an analysis in a workshop or in class, you would have, let's say, a, a huge number of students, not, not huge, but you may have tens or 20 students while using this tool to do an analysis, and you need a capability to process many APKs at a time. And the second is responsiveness. So even if in the scenario of serving one uh, researcher to do the research, well, the more responsive, um, the solution, the more searches that a researcher can carry out. So it will enable um, 
a researcher to do more exploration. The third is storage uh, efficiency. So, um, well, an APK, uh, well, so, sorry, um, so uh, an, an APK explodes, explodes in size after um, the compression and decoding, and the and the, this ensemble code has lots of rep, rep, um, repetitive elements. So there's a huge room for compression. And personally, I don't want to deal with complaints from the IT department. So it's not nice to have well huge small number of files stored in well 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 in in my university's um, st um, storage capacity. So then, it's to, so I so I needed to come up with a solution to this problem, uh, and first I chose a form. So I chose a format. So um, I came down to this format, a uh, Packard. Packard is an open source format that uh, uh, well that allows you to um, store where well, huge amounts of loads in a format, and well, in this format, and it has um, data uh, building data compression, and it is optimized for data scanning. Um, and it is a um, tables. Uh, um, it is a table-based uh, format, so you need to transform everything into a table format. So this is the table schema that I um, that I designed. So a feature is that um, that uh, so we were just not looking at particular APKs, but we all but we may be looking at the historical versions of an APKs. So this table schema needs to handle the historical versions or variants of APK. So I need to handle well different um, versions codes and uh, also even well variants of APK that would um, that would declare the same um, version code so uh, um, um, so I also record the um, hash value of the APK and well the the version code of the APK um, to handle versioning and, uh, and and the second thing is uh, the content so I would classify the files into two well well, well into well, well into two things the first is text based files for this assembled code and XML files well they're text based files and they could be scanned as well a string so I would put them as well in the content text field and the data type is text and for the images and 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 and, and some other things that could not be decoded as text I would store them as bytes in a binary block well for some other processing and and I also use um, the partitioning and feature of Sparkit to do well to split um, the data according to this to do these two types when so in my uh, well in the use case of my department and my colleagues they are just interested in codes and and and, and the XML file so I do not need to scan um, the binary file so I so I use partitioning to well well to store the text-based files and binary-based files separately, so it, uh, so so uh, by doing this, I can um, reduce the scan time. Uh, um, and other uh, good thing about using Packard is the avail is the ability to um, well, well to scale it up. So I could run everything using a Spark um, a cluster, and well to enable me to scan uh, uh, um, thousands or hundreds. Um, uh, uh, pro pre processed the APKs at the time. Well, um, so what I have told you is just, uh, well, the pre processing, the pre processing, the pre processing um, um, bit of uh, App Inspect. So this is just this part. So App Inspect is a, well, well, is a tool that allows uh, researchers to query um, um, the Google Play indirectly via this tool or, um, or, or, or or um, the researchers could upload their uh, APKs um, downloaded from third-party APK stores or depositories. And but the the um, the, the pre-processing thing is at the core of um, uh, 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 is the key enabler of uh, analysis at scale. So what are the use cases? So um, so my so my colleagues looked at, at okay um, the differences between the the international versions of TikTok and the Chinese version of TikTok. So TikTok is an app, but it, but, but interestingly, it has a variant for in the, the international market and it has a variant for the Chinese market. When they try to compare the historical versions of these two kind, kind of variants of apps, you can see that uh, uh, from the chart below, you see the well, the Chinese version of TikTok has far higher number of trackers embedded in it. Uh, and when you look at the international versions, you can see a, a drop. You can see a drop 
um, in the number of trackers. So it happened in um, 2018 when the uh, when the U.S. government made some accusations about um, privacy infringement and some uh, and some issues also with data protection. So China at this point. Um, I mean, TikTok at this point removed a huge number of um, Chinese trackers from the TikTok uh, for in uh, from the international variants. So it's interesting. To, so so uh, so, uh, so uh, this kind of analysis could not have been possible if we uh, uh, if we needed, um, let's say, some minutes to analyze each a analyze uh, each APK. The second use case is uh, is to detect some um, functionalities which could not be detected uh, from just scanning the permissions. Yes, permissions uh, the permissions from Android tell us quite a lot um, what an app uh, tries to get from the Android system. But there are some um, peculiar um, 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 system calls that would not require a developer to declare a permission request, like um, event like um sensor data let's say if an app tries to use um the, uh, try to get that data from the accelerometer dryo script from your phone the developer does not need to declare a permission in the manifest so you would not know whether or not just by looking at the manifest and from the permissions that when you download the, the app whether or not an app would get data from your dryo script and accelerometer and we know and there's quite a lot um discussion in the literature about using um as a lot as a non metadata and JavaScript data to infer your um, posture actions from this kind of sensor data. So this is uh, well, well, this is intrusive, and you can only know whether or not your app would get would have the cap capacity to get this kind of data by scanning the system course. So, um, so, uh, so app inspector well, by well by using the pre-processing method that I mentioned could scan. Uh, uh, system calls from uh, well from uh, well from tens and hundreds of apps in a very small amount of time, and you can see that uh, well there was a growth in the attempts or or, or, or in the lines that would have the potential to get um the sensor events uh, from the uh, from WeChat and from TikTok, and the third use case is the extraction of fully qualified domain names from hard-coded URLs. Let's say, well, it is suspicious that an app would hard-code well, a bunch of um, URLs um, well, 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 in, it, in it. And so let's take this app as a sample. It is um, Grinder. Grinder is a um, is a um is a social app for the gay community and we found a whopping 88 domain names hard coded in this app so of of course it will take a dynamic analysis or network um capture to confirm whether or not this app would um well would send data or would communicate with 88 um, fully qualified domain names it, yeah but it is suspicious enough for us to let's let's say well 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 to put this app in, well, uh, run this route uh, uh, in to study this app further, whether or not it it would actually be suspicious activities. Yeah, but just by extracting um, hard coded domain names would well would reveal, let's say, some inter interesting things about um, the uh, behavior of of the of um, of an app. So lesson learned. Oh, I so um so consider making responsiveness. Uh, uh, as a requirement, because when your tube becomes more responsive, you get more mining opportunities. And do not stick to a two stack. Try experimenting with new things um, like a distributed architecture and new data formats. I know that people might have some uh, reservation and reluctance to um, to try distributed architecture because of the complexity. Yeah, but but that could be benefit, uh, um, and you would not know it without um, giving it a try. And thank you for listening. Thank you. Okay, there is a comment before the question. I delivered basic workshops on Droid reversal. So Jason's taking it a lot, for, lot further. Hack the planet. Thank you. And the question is, was it difficult to persuade humanities ac academics that this could be done and is relevant? I've met one studying pregnancy apps who said they couldn't possibly. 
Yes, this is a fantastic question because this is the question that I'm dealing with right now. Um, and um, um, this is really a hard question indeed. It is good and hard question. And um, well, first is the, um, let's say, um, understand, um, um, so it comes down to how, uh, let's say, media scholars work with data. Let's say many um, media scholars will find it easy to work with treat the data because treat the data, well, 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 look more intuitive. Okay, you get treats, you get username and number of likes and this, and, and this type of data is easy for, us, for, for them to understand. But when it comes to software, um, you need quite a lot of um, awareness raising and training um, on, on, on understating software data. I, I, yeah, I, I would call it this way, although it may not be a good way to put it. Um, 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 and uh, I think showing them the potential of the tools and these methods is important. So let's say um, some of so um, some of my um, co-authors uh, um, in 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 some other papers um, did not know the amount of permissions that uh, that her app uh, would get uh, would require without um, using uh, my tool. So um, it so it requires some. It requires some efforts to demonstrate the capabilities of these tools, and also, um, so in the, in um, um, in digital methods, there's a practice of um, developing um, recipes. So you not only you develop the tools, but also a flow for um, others to follow through. So developing a recipe or, or, or a step-by-step -step guide would also be helpful um, for well for, for for people to pick up this method and the two. Yep. But this is a, a, a fantastic question because um my position um, is going to end um in this in December this year and I may not be able to finish my PhD. I'm not sure. Because somebody has a job. <laughs> and have you found apps trying to obfuscate code and avoid this sort of Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Have you found yeah. Have you found apps trying to obfuscate code to avoid this sort of detection? For example, splitting a string and concatenating at runtime. Yeah, well, yes. Um. So, so this, uh, so this, um, so, so this method or this tool is not um bulletproof, and they are tools to obfuscate code uh, systematically, and they are well, uh, and 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 so if uh. So if, a, if an app publisher um, uses this um, obfuscation um, tools, um, we, uh, well, we cannot um, just decompile the code and 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 and, and extract the strings um, from um, from the decompiled code. So yeah, that's limitation to um, 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 to this method. Thank you. And where do you report on suspicious apps you find? Well, um, so my colleagues uh, would write, well, well, would do them, uh, well, well, did they write some papers about? It? Yes, they wrote some papers about it. And yeah, but yeah, but the, um, so, uh, so there's a slight difference between, um, uh, not a slight difference, there's a huge difference between um, those who do cybersecurity and 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 um and 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 media studies research. Media studies research are more interested about the actors. Let's say who might be interested in this data, and what and 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 and, and what particular data that they could get. And their target audience, uh, well, would usually be uh, the uh, fellow academics or in a more or. Uh, and 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 so 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 there so um, there isn't a, a huge practice that there, there isn't a pra established practice or um, a, a a huge motivation for them to get the result out as soon as possible. Hey, I've made this great interesting discovery. Although, although um, I know that some want to do it, but um, yeah, but um, but yeah, uh, yeah, but. Um, I also I have also one story to share. I also work with some journalists. So I so so so, so when so, uh, in so at the height uh, of the COVID pandemic. So um, so most many governments on the 
in the world um, published the COVID-related apps. So I found in some of the so so I found that um, some of these apps uh, would be so problematic, and they were um, related to some uh, commercial interests because I found very unusual um, well, reuse of code from from a suspicious company. I talked it to uh, some local journalists, but the um, but those journalists. Um, were reluctant to, although they found my, uh, so they were surprised by my result and they trusted me, but they had security concern because they were um, living under an oppressing regime. Um, so they, um, so, um, so I tried to talk to um, journalists, but it is up to them whether or not they want to publish it. Yeah, thank you. So I'm afraid um, we're already over time. So maybe for this question, if you find Jason on Slack, are you on the RSE Econ Slack channel or speak to him? Yeah, I think, yeah. I, so I, I, yeah, I won't. Okay, just tell me about how to get on Slack. Okay, I'll do thank that. You. And then you can ask your question. And if somebody has a job for after December for Jason. Thank you very yeah. much.